Welcome everyone to my third tutorial for modding Divide and Conquer in Medieval 2 Total War. Today we will be talking through how to add a new unit to the game. I will be using a Black Numenorian unit for Angmar as an example. The first step that I always use is find a unit that uses the same precise um, weapons as the unit you're adding. For example, the Angmar bodyguard unit uses a sword and a shield, as do this, as does this Black Numenorean unit. So we copy and paste lower down. Then we go through and edit each of these lines in series as we need to. Firstly, the type must be edited. I will be changing this to Barim An Adun, which is the name of the unit. I do that so there's no confusion. Then we do this. You need the underscore in here because that tells it where the um, description is. I'll click search up. Oh, huh. Barry Manadun, and there you go. It will set that to there. It will also deal with the UI, so this has got to be correct. And that is not correct because there's an extra D. Category Infantry, that's correct, they're Sword and Shield Warriors. Class Heavy, yup. Voice Type, General. Accent, English. I shall quickly check down here. Uh, apparently they don't have an accent, so I will delete that. Banner, Faction, Main Infantry, that's irrelevant. Banner, Holy, Crusade, also irrelevant. We come to Norse Swordsman here, that will do. The Unit Size. This is the unit size in normal. If you are playing Divide and Conquer, times this number by 2.5 and you will get the precise number of units in the uh, thing. I would like there to be about 90 of these, so I will think of a unit that I know has 90-ish in its battalion size, which is including officers, and that would be uh, the Smiths of Eregion. So I go to the Eregion Smiths. Oh no, I changed that, didn't I? Mithlon Nobles, 35. Copy that. Search Barim, which will get me right back here. And there we go. These two numbers are not important. They are just as they are. Angmarim Captain Early Flag. Now that would be fine if this were just an Angmarim unit, but it is not. And these you relate directly to the Battle Models database. I will not be making a tutorial on how to use this. It is more advanced than I want people bugging me about. So I will quickly, very, very quickly, explain how this works. This here relates directly to a battle model, which is in the battles model, battle models database. To find that model in the battle models database, you do that. These lines here relate precisely to files that are the textures and mesh of that unit. Do not attempt to edit these files unless you are skilled or you will mess it up and you will not know how to fix it. Right, I think that's enough of that warning. Then we use the Barim Anadun for the officer. Well, I might just delete the officer line, considering this is the Barim Anadun unit. So the armor upgrade models, which we'll get to in a bit, will also be this. Mount effect. This is the effectiveness in combat versus mounts. They are sword and shield units, so they're not going to be very good, but they will be a little bit better in that they will not be at a disadvantage against horses, and they will only be at a slight disadvantage against camels. Seafaring, they can go on ships. Hide forest. They can hide in a thicket of trees, as in they can hide in a forest, basically. Not hide improved forest, like this. That's not correct. That should be hide improved forest. Uh, which is where they can hide by a tree on the battle map. Or hide anywhere, which is they can literally just stand right out in the open and hide anywhere. This is not a good idea for this unit. Can withdraw means that you can tell them to leave the battlefield if you're losing. Free upkeep unit means they are capable of gaining free upkeep in a settlement. 
Uh, I don't know why that's been duplicated on the bodyguard unit there. I'll just delete one of those. Frighten foot means that they uh, negatively impact the morale of units, of infantry units that they come up against. I will also add command, which uh, improves the morale of nearby friendly troops, and frighten mounted. No, not frighten mounted, they're not spears. This line here, just leave as is. Don't mess with it. Stat health, the same. Although this number here, if you are using, if you're creating a unit like trolls, you can up that number because that's the number of hit points, the number of hits that the unit can take before dying. Stat primary, this is the primary attack of the unit. These guys are an elite heavy infantry, so I'm going to give them 13, 6, 13, 7 even, which is their raw attack and their charge bonus. Leave these ones as follows, no zero zero, unless it is a ranged unit like the Turek Magan below them, in which case it'll be the projectile, the range, and the number of missiles. And you have melee to signify that this attack is a melee attack. Melee blade, piercing sword, 21. Don't worry about any of these ones. That's why I said specify when you're copying down the thing, that they use exactly the same weapons. So that primary attack is, sorry, attributes, is whether or not the unit is, for example, armor piercing or a spear unit, as you will just see here, spear bonus, light spear, or for these guys, not these guys, these guys, armor piercing. It's not really important about that, so I'll get on with this. Secondary attack. This is irrelevant for anything that does not have multiple attacks, like the Barry Manadun. In which case, leave it as zero, no, blunt, none. All of this. Just leave it as that. And the attributes also zero. I will quickly detail for the ranged unit below them that the these two lines are the secondary attack, the melee stats. Actually, I'll bump this up to 16 and 7. Then we come to stat primary armor. The secondary of this is completely useless. Leave it as 0, 0 flesh. The primary is important. This first value, the one that is highlighted on your screen, is the armor stat, the base armor. I'm going to up this to the same as the Tarek Magan, so 16. Then we come to melee defense, their skill in melee combat. 10, because they're tough. Then finally, the shield value. These guys do have shields, so we leave this as something higher than zero. It's going to be six. Metal is the sound the weapons make when they are blocked. Stat heat, stat ground, stat, stat heat and stat ground are detailed if you're using divide and conquer at the top of the file, as are all of the other attributes which is why I'm going over this slightly faster than I would if they weren't. So stat heat, extra fatigue suffered by a unit in hot climates. Stat ground is combat modifiers on different ground types. Scrub, which is just grassland. Sand, which is a desert. Forest, which is forest and snow, which is winter or snowy. I uh, will quickly navigate back to Barim Anadun and we get to their mental this first value is their morale score. So 24, actually 25, which makes them incredibly tough. Disciplined is their formation. No, it isn't. It's something else. I will quickly go up to the top and see what disciplined means. Disciplined. Uh, oh, right. Impetuous can charge without orders. This is their morale response, how they respond to being shot like with a charge in the back by cavalry or something. The better it is, disciplined being the highest, the less likely they are to instantly rout. Highly trained is the uh, formation, how tight the formation is. So that charge distance is how far they have to run to get their full charge bonus. So that's 10 meters, I believe. 
Fire delay is irrelevant to any non-melee unit. So we ignore it. Food, ignore that completely. It's irrelevant for divide and conquer. And then stat cost. The first digit is the number of turns to recruit four. Then the cost, which will be 1650. That's the initial cost to recruit. The third number is the upkeep per turn, 525. These, four num these five numbers here are all melee. Uh, sorry, multiplayer stats. Ignore those unless you intend to do multiplayer, in which case it's at the top. Armor upgrade models, as I said earlier, we will be using Barim and Adun for these guys. Ownership, Portugal and Slave, so that is Angmar and the Independent Realms. These eras are just who can recruit it when. And recruit priority offset is relatively unimportant. I will quickly go all the way to the top of the document and see what that says. Because um, it doesn't. Lovely. Just assign that whatever value you think best. And that, quite simply there, is how you add a unit to the game. If you were to go into the menu, custom battle as Angmar, and select Barim Anadun, they would appear in-game. Because they're there, and their battle model is here, assigned to Portugal. To get UI working, as in the text, you go into the export units file, if you edit it, delete the bin file associated with it in the data slash text folder, as we did in the first tutorial of this series. Uh, put the name of the unit in, the description, whatever you want it to be, and then the short description, which only appears in multiplayer or custom battle. And that's all. I hope this has been an informative tutorial for you, and I will see you for the next one. Commander Soul, over and out.